Well, we want to start with what's happening in Sri Lanka right now, which is something you can't ignore. It's a major story that I want everyone to pay attention to. There's something you won't see on CNN. You won't see it on the Western media. What's happening in the small Asian country of Sri Lanka is about to happen to the rest of the world. And it's very important that we should be paying attention. The sad part is, is that all of this was created by Western politicians. So just to give you a sense of what's actually happening in Sri Lanka right now, long lines, people can't get access to, they can't get the money out of their banks, they can't get gasoline, they're waiting in incredibly long lines just to get food. Um, right now, inflation is off the charts. Here is some people waiting in line for hours just to get access to gasoline. So how long have you been waiting? How about three, four hours. Three, four hours? Yeah, waiting here. Oh my God, for petrol? Yeah, petrol. Exasperated queues for tuk-tuks. Gas no, petrol no, diesel no, too much problem. So how long have you been waiting? How about three, four hours? Three, four hours? Yeah, waiting here. Oh my God, for petrol? Yeah, petrol. Exasperated queues for tuk-tuks. Gas no, petrol no, diesel no, too much problem. Celine at all, they can't run, so these people are out of a job. They can't do anything. In fact, the government there is saying they have one day reserves for the whole country and that's it. Yeah. They don't have enough for everyone to get gas for more than one day. Yeah. And so these people are, uh, you know, without power for 15 hours a day. We had a power outage here at the station a little while earlier today. That's why we had some problems technically. But uh, we were able to get at least some part of it back up and running. 15 hours a day forced without any kind of electricity in the heat that they experienced there. No way to keep food refrigerated because they don't have any food right now. In Sri Lanka, the police are unable to contain the anger of the starving people that are happening, that, that are taking to the streets right now. Politicians being beaten, right, in their homes, uh, their cars set on fire or thrown over. This is just an example of some of the attacks that are happening. Um, as you see here, as people are attacking, this is an attack on politicians. Um, as people are grabbing these politicians out of their cars. Oh my and goodness, beating those them. are bats and wooden sticks? Yes, all of this. I mean, this is what's happening. Um, you know, look at this. As they break through a police line. These are, this is a politician being grabbed and beaten. They smash into this car. There's other video, of course, of like cars being overturned, thrown into waterways, into riverways. Unbelievable. The people are in full crisis mode there. Um, and the people are so fed up that they're finding politicians. Like I said, they're dragging them out of cars. They're, uh, they're, they're taking them out of their homes and beating them. And it is a full collapse of a society. Yeah. As yeah. people are used to living in it. Yeah, exactly. And this is all coming soon to Europe and the rest of the world. This is all something we should be paying attention to. But before we get further into the story, we want you to come over to redacted.inc, become a channel member there. You can support our work as a member. Very, very important to go to redacted.inc. You'll get access to exclusive content there on our site. You'll be supporting independent journalism, covering stories like this. We use Rumble's infrastructure, so we're not using Amazon. Amazon web services or anything else. We're using Rumble as our backend infrastructure so we can keep the strong hand of YouTube and big tech out of our pockets and out of our, out of our content here on the show so we don't get blocked. If you believe in supporting independent journalism that isn't controlled by any censors, please then go to redacted.inc to support our work. So what exactly is happening in Sri Lanka? That is the question. Well, the rupee depreciated by more than 60%. Inflation is up by 20%. The food sector prices are up 30%. Gasoline, petrol up 150%. Citizens eat only once a day if they can find food at all, if they're lucky enough to find, find food. So why exactly is this happening? Um, it's a great question. It's simple. The sanctions against Russia is the main is the main thing that I want to drive people's attention to here because you can almost pinpoint to the day when this started happening, mm -hmm. they were already incredibly poor, right? I mean, yes. this is one this is one of many countries that is incredibly poor. This is already a country that is saddled with massive amounts of debt to the first world. Um, and the citizens are absolutely in full panic mode. Okay. Can you explain that connection then? Russian sanctions to a collapse of Sri Lanka's government? Yeah, because until, and, and it was 
fairly peaceful, right, until this started happening, until we actually put, until Western countries who have a lot more money and who are, uh, hold the debt burden for a lot of these third world countries, said, you know what, we think we're going to place uh, food, wheat sanctions, we're going to place all kinds of food sanctions and oil sanctions on Russia, which by the way, where's their intended, the intended target is to hurt Russia. Right? Yes. It hasn't hurt Russia. The, the Russian ruble, of course, has eclipsed where it's been in a two-year high, and it's actually beating the U.S. dollar. Um, so this was all meant uh, to hurt Vladimir Putin, and it hasn't. What it, and we warned you here on the show, we warned you that this debt burden, what was going to happen is that people in, the, in these poorer countries, we said Africa, we said Southeast Asia, we said these areas, we're going to feel it first, right? When we sanction people in Russia and we cut off oil, it's going to hurt the people that depend upon it on a, like a moment-by-moment -moment basis. So not just oil, but oil obviously is the biggest commodity that we're talking about, right? right? So the economic forces in play here, what you're saying, if I may summarize, right. is that there is a pool of supply, right, that the world is used to operating with. But because of sanctions, now we've limited the pool of supply that will go in and around the world, right? And so the countries that are the poorest will now not be able to compete for the smaller supply, the smaller amount of supply, because the wealthier countries can get in there and buy it right. and survive on it. But since we're shrinking the global supply chain by only politically correct products, right, then it hurts people. So these are just, this is proof that economic decisions don't happen in a vacuum and they have far reaching and often devastating uh, consequences. And so how does a country like this, which everyone is experiencing inflation, right, throughout the throughout the globe, uh, but for some people it will hit just so much harder and be uh, impossible to surmount, right? So this happened within the last 15 years in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Uh, their currency collapsed. They had absolutely no economy. And somehow they dug their way out. And so there, there, there is... There is a way home through something like this, but what does it look like? Well, it's not happening anytime soon, and it's really, really brutal. It's not going to happen anytime soon. So, yeah, we can wait and hope that it ends up like Zimbabwe. But meanwhile, the rest of the world is going to experience this. And, and I we're mean, already on the path for this. So I want to point out about these protests, by the way. So these protests didn't start out violent. They only turned violent after government forces attacked protesters, the peaceful protesters. And this is very, very important because you can see these images and you're like, oh my God, they're attacking politicians, they're burning, they're, they're grabbing whatever food they can. No, no. These were peaceful until government forces, the very people that are keeping these people locked up, told that they can't have power, we have no oil, uh, you can't get food, these are the rations you're allowed to have. That's when it all went to crap. Here is an example uh, explanation of that. And with the Prime Minister himself saying that things are expected to get worse before they get better, are you expecting to see uh, that reflected in the, uh, the street protest movement we, we were seeing last week and into this week? So the street, street protests have been there for several months now. Um, they, they, these have been very much citizen-led, peaceful protests, still violence erupted last Monday. And that violence came, I want to be very clear, from uh, the government side, so that it was state-sponsored violence targeting the protesters. So I think so what this is highlighting, right, what's so interesting, right, is that Western forces can say, well, we're going to shrink the supply chain of commodities globally. So wheat are only sanctioned to buy from certain places, gasoline, uh, other power um, pipelines, you know, so basically everything has been shrunk. And then we're going to see countries doing exactly what India did over the weekend and saying, we're afraid that this smaller supply chain will increase prices to the point that Indians will not be able to compete and all of the crops that we have will be exported. So we're banning export of wheat, which the G20 convention leaders throughout Europe said, whoa, that is unacceptable. You got to play ball. We're used to buying wheat from India, even though India is not a big wheat exporter. This is proof, right, that some countries are going to start saying, 
we need to make sure we have food here. We can't just grow food out of the ground and ship it to wealthy nations while our people starve. Um, India, interestingly enough, experienced famine after famine after famine in the 200 years that Brit the British Raj was in power. Uh, 35 million Indians starved while millions of tons of wheat were exported to Britain from India. So India learned its lesson and they're saying, we're not going to do that again. We're going to make sure that we actually do not die of starvation here. So whatever we've got here, we're going to keep a close eye. So I think that other governments will start to do this. We will start to see exported and imported products continue to rise. So if you're the kind of person who's really used to getting your avocados from Mexico, right, this is going to affect us all more than just that. Like I know avocados are a luxury product, right? Uh, gasoline and wheat are not. Right. Well, Sri Lanka's debt crisis is a warning to the world because the World Bank says a global debt storm is coming and it could engulf 70, 107 countries uh, or sorry, 70 developing countries and make their economies fall like dominoes. So what are the threats they're actually facing? These poor countries are in a massive debt to these rich countries, which keep them in a cycle of poverty. Then add on top of that the Western sanctions against Russian food and oil, and you see what's happening before our eyes. United Nations issued this warning that 107 countries have severe exposure to the Ukraine war. Yes, the Western sanctions against Russia are crushing everyone else but their intended target of Vladimir Putin. That's 107 countries with a total of 1.8 billion people. So just for a frame of reference here, you think about this. Sri Lanka has a population of 22 million people. It's relatively small. Yes. Right? So what happens, though, when what happens in Sri Lanka starts happening in, um, say, a country of 60 million, right? It's a population of 60 million. Well, we don't have to guess, actually, because it's actually happening already. Here's Italy yesterday. Take a look at Naples, where it's turned into you know, basically a war zone. So this is Naples and you have, I mean, the train station is just overrun with people sleeping on the ground. It's an absolute mess there right now. Um, and this is the rat. This is what's happening right now. These yell, these citizens rising up against Mario Draghi saying, we want to work. We want to work. Let us work. Let us work. Um, stop with the lockdown. Stop with the masks. Stop with the restrictions. Stop with the government mandates. You have kids in school. It's been 30 degrees. And these kids are forced to wear masks and sing. So they're like singing and they're sweating and they don't have air conditioning. So they're yeah. sweating their asses off and they're singing with these masks on and they, they're they miserable, miserable. And the people are saying, we want to work. And this is not the only, I mean, you've seen protests now all across Italy. Um, but of course, remember, all of this is just Putin's price hike, right? This, that's Well, we're... also now in Sri Lanka, the government is having to print money to pay government employers, like literally print money. So, you know... It, the economy already tells us what happens when, when that happens. I, I want to sort of wrap up this segment, though, with a story that I heard on the, um, our good friend Tom Wheelwright's podcast, the WealthAbility podcast, about when he visited Zimbabwe and his tour guide told him how he survived that e e the economic collapse when basically all of the money in his savings account was worth nothing. He could buy nothing. Right. There was no gas. It was this situation. Right. Um, and he said, well, what I did was every time I got a paycheck um, or was able to earn some money, I would buy a sheep or a goat or something that produced so that I knew that I could continue to feed my family. Not everyone, obviously, in those crowded cities in Sri Lanka can buy a sheep or a goat or house it or feed it, right? These things are an issue. But this is a clue for all of us to start thinking about what would we have in the event of an economic collapse that would continue to feed your family, whether it's chickens, whether it's a business where you cut other people's hair, right? Whatever it is, what is your asset? Right. Um, I think this is really important. That's why we have the Financial Freedom Academy. So you can start to think about how your wealth is not dependent on the economy or the government. That's right. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. You know, we've been banned, we've been blocked, we've been censored. That's why we started our own website to stay connected with you for free. That's right. So head on over to redacted.inc and make sure you're connected with us. You can sign up again at redacted.inc, not .com.